Ready. Right, left, 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 right, back, ready. Remember my image. Keep the pose, don't change anything. Recall my image. Did anything change about it? Ask yourself a question. Keep working. It's like an eternal question, what to do on stage, to live or to play. People tend to believe that Meyerhold said to play and Stanislavski said to live, but of course these generalizations are wrong. When you don't just combine them, but understand these theories in more depth, we see they were both saying one must live and play at the same time. It goes without saying to live on stage, but there needs to be an understanding that you are also playing a game, playing for real, with your partner. This feeling of playing a game, that is what I'm working on, to find the feeling of playing a game, the state of the game. In life, when we die, we don't enjoy it. On the stage, when we die, we get a high. This is the feeling of a game. It is very hard to catch. Peasants are coming from the fields and being followed by a whole crowd of barefooted women. It is damp in the field, it's dusk, the fog is hanging over the rye, it's so beautiful. There should be a distance between the actor's ego and the character's ego. The two must be able to blend and separate them at certain moments. The actor must be able to use this blending and separating as a tool. Uh, Russian opera singer Shlepin uh, could tell a joke backstage and then go right on stage and make the audience cry. But just a second ago he was telling a funny joke. This isn't wrong. It's right. It's what it should be. That's the way he worked, his psychophysics. Boom, and he is in the game. Boom, and he is out of the game. This is very important. Actors should be able to instantly switch back and forth like this. How long did it take Shalyapin to prepare himself to do that? Months of rehearsals. Maybe it took him his whole life to achieve that level of acting and be able to use it in his playing. He found his own thing. What expectations do you have about the opportunity to teach in America? There is no doubt it would be interesting. Uh, they have a different mentality there. Historically, people there are more unrestrained. I am interested to see how my method will be received. However, I suspect this quality of being unrestrained could also become self-indulgent. People have the potential to go deeper. I believe this depth can be reached through the game. And depth does not mean boring, like people tend to do Dostoevsky, tediously boring. That is not depth. It's too heavy and everything becomes too significant. Depth is lighter and simpler. When I worked in Sweden and England, there was also this issue. They in the States could have this tendency too. Their work seemed just okay and yes organic, it was kind of precise and according to the action it didn't really have any glaring faults. And as Famenka says, is it right? Yes. Is it interesting? No. So how to make it right and interesting at the same time? That's the thing. I'm really interested in working on this. It's an area where I can probably offer some ideas and may even find something new for myself. Tell me. As you are talking, 
Is there anything getting from her to you? Let's agree. I'm not criticizing you. Don't worry about it. Let's agree that your main game exists in between the words and you will say your words without almost any attitude. No, no, don't act it. You should still be in that state. Why do you think American, English or Swedish actors should learn about the work you do? I think that everybody should know about it. Not only English actors, Americans, everybody who does theater. Why? I think that without these principles, theater will stop. It will either imitate movies, or they will continue to remake classic plays in a special way. Say, Shakespeare staged in a construction site, or in an office with computers and stuff. This is just mechanical contemporization. It doesn't have any of the real depths embodied in theater. This deep entity is fading little by little, and it will be impossible to get back to it. If we don't change the direction in which we're heading, this realization should deal should lead us to the energy of the game. This needs a special kind of actor. There are no actors like that. Today's actors are too used to complete support of directors. Do you think actors pass the responsibility for their creativity to their directors? Yes. And the same is true with directors. I don't like it when actors say, this is how the director told me to play it. Or when directors say, my actors didn't quite make it. This is always the sign of a bad show. Uh, with a good show, this doesn't happen. Everyone is taking responsibility. They are not on opposite sides of the barricade. They create the whole thing together. I teach students uh, this kind of collaborative work. All the directors oversee the entire process. They must understand that they are also working with artistically unique individuals. It is a sin to waste their energy. It must be used. It must be provoked. You have to be natural. <laughs> now when you walk, you have to be natural. Walk one by one and I will watch you. Did you feel natural? Everybody was very natural. I will also show you how you should do it. I'll walk. All of you will watch how I walk. You need to remember every single move I make. I will need one person. You will watch my face as if you have a camera. Like what I do with my face. <laughs> do I have a camera? <laughs> okay? And so you are shooting me shooting up close. Close up. All the time I have to have my clothes up. You know, always my face front. You should always keep it in front of me. Not profile, just like the camera over there. You see the camera over there? Yeah. Okay, we'll walk. Did you manage to remember everything? Yeah. <laughs> no, why not? Uh, there were too many things. 
Okay, I was provoking you. Why did I do it? So, that was a provocation. Let's check it out. But for you, why did I do it? What do you think? To show how tempo rhythm works. What is your name? What Ben was doing? What was he doing? On He was walking. He walked exactly the same way you guys did before. Ben, did you notice how you got from one part of the room to the other? Did you notice the cell has been from here, then did you notice how you got there? Why? No, why not? Because I was focused on you. That's it. So that's it. Don't concentrate on yourself. Focus on what you are doing and on your partner. Then you will walk through the distance without even noticing it. I also told you to do a stupid thing, saying walk naturally. Of course each of you will walk naturally. What is your system about? My system is no system. Everyone has to find their own system. I just help them get started. But you have structured methods, right? I offer methods, yes, and using them, actors to find their own method. They need to find their place, that state where they feel free to play. For instance, one person might want to take a text start analyzing it and then rehearse over and over for a long time finding some tricks and turns but another person might want to get right on their feet and start walking through it these two people are very different uh, there is no no one single unified system there are extroverts and introverts one person wants to go from the content to the physical expression, the other wants to go from physical expression to the content. If I tried to impose my own vision on students, they may resist. I advise them, make suggestions, I tell them what works for me. Ultimately, I provoke them to find their own way. They say that before each show, Michael Chekhov would slowly roll up one short sleeve, then the other. Next, he would contract and expand like that, and then he would go on stage. He needed a special 10 minutes. He found his own thing. Why do we call it the system of Michael Chekhov? Because it is the system of one particular actor. My objective is to make every actor look for their own system. They have to find what they need, what helps them. They need to choose their tools based on that rule. There are some basic things. Awareness must be trained in a special way, the feeling of playing a game and so on. These are the cornerstones. Understanding of the action must also be mastered. It must be there. However, main thing is to provoke a person to search. The ideal student is the one who will refute you afterwards. They need to find their own way. Only then I can say I've achieved what I wanted. I woke them for the search. I provoke them. I love this word, provocation. The target exercise. With their eyes closed, students try to sense where their partner has sent the word yes to their right hand, left hand, or head. Don't try to feel the wind from their hand and don't try to listen. You need to simply have a sensation. Listen, guys, of course, your hearing is involved a lot, but now we need to have a sensations. I came to some of you through the word, and you sensed where I sent, right on, 100% of the time. I was throwing it, so you sensed it right on, and I did so just by whispering. With some of you, you were only able to sense it right on about 30% of the time. You need to work on honing your sensations. I was provoking you on purpose. You need to feel it. 
The one who is sending the word, you also need to feel where your partner wants to receive it. This is the type of interaction you guys need. It is not hearing, it is a sensation of sending. My sending is not like yes, yes, no, it's just easy, like this, and then like that. And I hit the target right on, and right on, and right on, and right on again. You see, really, the most complicated thing on stage is to learn how to say yes to your partner. This yes must be achieved. We come on stage and we say yes, because we need to play it together. Yes. Not no. Yes. Evil and good of existence, he is dragging as a heavy burden. Your shoulders are free, your feet are flying, barely touching the ground, because the movement is initiated from here, your heart center. Now, do the same thing, but the impulse of movement is coming from here, your stomach center. Evil and good of existence, he is dragging as a heavy burden. Stop, you aren't supposed to float. This center hooks you to the ground. You became just like Alphonse. Alphonse is me. When did you start working on the theater of games and how have you been developing this method? I finished my studies at the University of Arts and Culture in Moscow. It was the course of Mikhail Budkevich. He was an amazing director and teacher, just super class. He introduced Michael Chekhov's method to me. From him I learned there can be a different kind of theater. After that, I studied at Gitis, Russian Academy of Theater Arts. It was the course of Anatoly Vasilyev. He introduced me to the theater of games method. It turns out that Mikhail Chekhov's uh, technique and the method of Vasilyev are actually quite related, because both are based on improvisation. Stanislavski invented improvisation when he said, today, here and now. This means it didn't happen before and it will not exist after. But he never included improvisations in his shows. There was no place for improvisation in the staged shows. In Michael Chekhov and in the theatrical game structures of the theater of games, there is a special time and place where an, an actor is free to improvise without leaving the structural frame of the show. Vasilyev created uh, the methodology and theory of the theater of games, and he practiced it for many years. Can we say, then say that the method and idea of the theater of players belongs to Vasilyev and not to Butkevich? They belong to Butkevich. However, Vasilyev implemented the practical development of the theater of games. What are the key points of the theater of games that you work on? First, uh, the separation between the actor and the character. I am not a character, I am an actor on stage. The audience sees an actor on stage. There is an agreement between the audience and the actor that the actor is actually the character, for instance, Katerina from the storm. And, unless we are hallucinating, the audience sees an actor who is called Katerina, nothing else. 
the existence of the actor is reality, the existence of the character is questionable. There must be an actor on stage. The actor tells the story of a character. The actor plays with the character, just like children play with balls or blocks. The actor freely uses the character. There must be distance, a separation between the actor and the character. It can be large or small. It's better if two don't blend. Blending with the character is a catastrophe. We can come to the territory of the psychological theater. The second thing is the opportunity to freely express oneself in the game. This implies improvisation. Of course, actors need to know the laws of improvisation, the degrees of freedom, and how to return to the plot. The story must be told, no matter what. The actor's expressiveness is very important to me. We can improvise and it will seem like real life. But if it is like real life, then let's go outside and watch real life. Theater is not real life. Specific expressive means are very important. One is the actor's voice and its range. Your voice up to the ceiling. Don't look up. Don't lift your head. Up to the ceiling. Higher. Up through the roof. Up there. Those who are standing on the heads, start speaking your song like poetry with full voices through throw the sound. Give it away. Let's go. Okay, enough. Don't overdo it. Shake it off. Relax. Breathing technique is important to me, so the actors don't ruin their voices. Expressiveness in the voice and precise diction are also important. Plastique is very important. I don't mean pantomime. The actor's body must be expressive. Relax, shake it off and start from the beginning. Focus on yourself. Relax your body, starting with your toes, gradually freeing everything up. Bring it to yourself. Embrace. Your whole body works. Push away. Swiftly turn around. Your body works, your body expresses it. Everything you feel is expressed by your body as a whole. Hands, legs, head, neck, ears, nose, everything. Your body must be able to speak. What is the significance of the theater of games for the contemporary theater? It is important as any new step is that moves towards something unknown. For me, these are important steps of development and continuation. They take us further down the road. They lead us away from something that already existed, something well known, that has been fully processed, and that ended long ago. The psychological theater is great, but its time has passed. It has its place in the history of theater, but it is not, it's not forever. What's next? What comes next? Do you think that the theater of games is next? Yes. How does the method of uh, the theater of games change actors? First of all, actors should not come on stage to perform something someone else created. In other words, an actor should transform from simply being a performer into being someone who actually creates something else. It doesn't make a lot of sense to come on stage just to perform someone else's work. Actors should create something new. It is one thing today, it is something different tomorrow. Every time on stage, there should be a new creation. The actor becomes an artist. 
The actor becomes free. He or she can't say anymore, I depend on someone else. The actor is free to express his or her talent. They begin to live a different life. They start playing the game. During the game, they begin to learn something new about themselves as human being and as a creative individual. It's not about some elusive fictional character anymore. Emotions and temperament are givens in psychological theater. They are preset. Such and such character has this particular emotion, what they feel, what the emotion is built on, how it should be expressed, and so on. An actor goes on stage knowing what they will have to express, what emotion they will have to get to. In the theater of games, the actor doesn't know what emotion they will have to get to. They know their possible range of action, they know what they can do, and they feel and go with the emotions and appear to them at any particular point. They don't know in advance. They are not trying to get to any particular emotion. The emotion that appears can be totally unexpected. Tell me, actors, what kind of process is going on with you when you don't allow the spontaneous sensations to turn into strong feelings and then let yourself live through them? Try it again. We said that this is two friends saying goodbye. And what do we have? You see, you need to play whatever comes to you. You can't be such pedants, playing by the book, saying like idiots, you did it wrong, you need to do whatever, accept whatever comes to you, don't think about anything. Sure, I could fix or somebody else could tell you what to do, but what you find in that moment, it's important. Try it again. Sergey, don't be lazy with your body. Throw yourself at her with the full power of your body, just like she's doing. Don't think, just do it right away. Stop. Do you feel her arm through the fabric? Her skin? See? And uh, now he doesn't know where to look. Smell? She's the only one with the smell. Don't rush. Look, you're touching her hair. She's in front of you. Don't hallucinate something else. Hair. Does it smell? Is there perfume? You see, you're breathing differently now. Where is your hand? It is on her waist. Where is your other hand? Lower. What do you feel? Don't take it away. If you take it away, you will not feel it. What sensation do you have? Under her tights is her skin. Asha, he is a man. Here you have real skin. It's not covered. You see? His head is moving. Something is changing in him. And keep developing it. Okay, stop for now, otherwise it may go too far. As Mikhail Budkevich used to say, ideally we should have what Michael Chekhov wanted. That's when an actor creates a show every time, as if it is for the first time, right in front of the audience. How does this, as if, as if for the first time, differ from what they say in psychological theater? Because they also use the term as if for the first time. No, in the psychological theater, they rehearse for a long time and then bring it on stage. In the theater of games, they do a lot of etudes, talk a lot about it and do a lot of trainings and improvisations. They agree on things. Then they come on stage and build the show. Is this uh, to the point where the actors don't have set blockings? No. I rarely give uh, the actors blocking. We have special trainings that teach actors how to use this space properly. Would you say the theater of games is an actor's theater? You know, yes, but while it's an actor's theater, it can't exist without a director. What hopes do you have about transferring your work to America? I have hopes. 
I don't know a lot about America, but I've had the chance to learn a bit about the country. As it turns out, I'm not subject to anti-American propaganda. I saw open people when I was there. They say that Americans' smiles are artificial. I don't know. Uh, to me, when a person smiles, uh, they open up. It is natural. It is a biological law. They're very open people. They're thirsty for knowledge. They want to learn new things and try them out for themselves. They're not lazy. When you give them an exercise to do, they do it as it is, as it as if it is the most important thing in their life. For Russian actors, this is rare. If American actors follow you, they follow you to the fullest. They don't have this arrogant skepticism. They are people who seek understanding and want to master new knowledge. It is interesting to me. Do you think there is an opportunity in America to develop this kind of theater? Yes, in America there is an opportunity for its development. Uh, there is an opportunity to master a different theatrical method and to create something totally new based on it. Afterward, it will come back to us. Would American theater and American students gain something new from this type of work? I think yes, because their level of dedication in class is so incredible. Of course, uh, with this kind of dedication, actors are able to genuinely perceive, master and produce great results. What do you hope to accomplish in America? Ideally. Yes, it would be great to have a group of people who are seriously interested in the theater profession. With them, uh, we would go through the entire theater alphabet from A to Z analyzing all the different methods and theater techniques. It would be a complete immersion into these programs. After that, they would be equipped with the theater technology, theory and practice. Then with this group, we would do a serious authentic show. Since Americans like classic Russian plays, let it be a Russian play, a very strong one say Ostrovsky, Pushkin, or I don't know, maybe Chekhov. However, it should be done for real, sincerely, and not naively like dilettants, as they often do Chekhov, not only in America, but in other countries too. The play should be a real serious heartfelt endeavor that would be the show. is the significance of the method you have been uh, working on for contemporary Russian theater. If we consider theater as art, of course, my method is quite necessary. Russian theater has always been the Russian psych psychological theater. But the path that the masters of Russian theater paved, beginning with Stanislavski, has come to an end. People, actors, as artistic entities are stuck in a rut, are at a dead end. 
Therefore, Russian theater has turned to different, new and more ostentatious stories and plays in an attempt to entertain. The psyche that Stanislavski introduced was based on the scientific achievements of professors Sechenov, Bechterev, Pavlov. It was founded before there was a definition of quantum physics or of impulse energy. With new discoveries in mind, we come up with an absolutely different human psychiatry, psychology, and a different idea of energy, and of course, because of all this, people have drastically changed. I've always pointed out how difficult it is for us to watch old plays, for example, shows of the 1940s, when the Stanislavski method was the accepted standard. They've turned out to be such tedious shows for contemporary audiences because Stanislavski's system only really worked well in that time for people of that time. But theater has developed and so a different theory must be developed. Today's Russian theater schools stopped teaching the Stanislavski uh, method long ago. They've pulled from many sources, but none of them have their own method. A few years ago I opened a theater. It was uh, called Theater Class, the class of laboratory analysis of the Stanislavski system. System. As a matter of fact, I'm not so different from Stanislavski's system. I have been developing it, keeping in mind that there is a new knowledge about the human being, new knowledge about the psyche, etc., that we've become aware of. At first, a method looked like the theater of games method, but in the end, I kind of came back to the Russian psychological theater. How does your method change the actors and students who work with you? It changes them a lot. It radically changes them. The performer in traditional theater is not responsible for anything. They are told what to do. The main principle I teach my actors is that they are fully responsible for their playing on stage. I think it's good. I need to tell you that your sufferings with the text did influence the scene. You played much better without the words. It's good work. I understood a lot about women and men. It's good work, isn't it? When you lean over, it's impossible to see through your hair. Lean over, but your face needs to be seen. Look somewhere ahead. You need to understand that you don't have anywhere to go. Now it looks like you don't have a way inside. In reality, you have no way at all. You need to bend your neck, but you need to keep your face here, somehow like this. Angela, don't do this gesture. Your gesture should go like this. Hey, wake up. And then the go away gesture. Go away gesture. Don't invert the gesture. It weakens it. Don't, don't do it this way. 
and after that I want to see it precisely. Go! Go away! That is what I want to see. Where, where, where there is nobody here, there is no one there, nobody! Fine, then go! Go, go, go away! Now, this looks like the gesture you just did. Then you say goodbye. And here, right here, goodbye. And with this gesture, okay? Fine. One of the central aspects of acting is that we, whether you like it or not, use the biography we live in, historical events and our own life experience. And so, concerning this particular aspect, I radically changed my approach to teaching students by not allowing them to use the reality of their lives as the foundation of the stories they are telling on stage. Everything actors bring from their lives, from their own experiences, their sorrows and joys, must only be brought in the form of art, in other words, as a metaphor. I do not approve of actors using a direct connection to their personal lives. I think it is a crime to use personal life tragedy for audience enjoyment. What kind of new theater springs out of the method you teach? I would call it a classical education. Not avant-garde, but a classical kind of education. Because an actor who goes through my school is fully educated from zero to a certain point of perfection that is possible today. I would call it a classical theater. It is not traditional in the sense that uh, tradition is very weak today. People have simply started cloning the Stanislavski method. They are uh, dissecting it, uh, draining it from every angle and nothing good is coming out of it. We need to come back to Stanislavski for real. What hopes do you have for the future of theater in relation to what you are doing? What are you trying to achieve? I may be too ambitious, but I would like to keep some recordings of my work in rehearsal so that the next generation can use what I have done and build upon it. I'm confident that uh, this theater has a future. The pure game structures quickly become stale. The pure structures of psychological theater, which they have been using on the Russian stage, are stuck at a dead end and have become atheistic. Atheistic. But if we can combine a religious mentality with the mentality of the player, do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, if we can use a non-atheistic idea of the human being and uh, when we are analyzing our psychology, but also add to the analysis the point of view of a player, this combination could give theater a future. What hopes uh, do you have for transferring a part of your work to America? I'm extremely interested in this. I know we are very different in our mentalities and in our soul education, but I've seen a lot of brilliant American actors a lot in film and in theater. I used to think that there was no theater there, but I've seen them to, to do real dramatic work. Secondly, I am very interested in how a person who is not weighed down with our tradition of Russian psychological theater, uh, the creation of character biographies, the heavy idea of I know what to do on stage that depresses the mind and that depresses freedom of an improvisation. I believe a person free of all of this would give stunning results. Russian will simply be jealous. What does your method give actors? First of all, it gives them freedom for improvisation. Secondly, it gives them freedom for thinking and for a sense of authorship of the art. Thirdly, during the first stages of training, 
it is taught that there are no criteria for good or bad. This is because there are no criteria for doing it right or wrong, because they're the creators of their own plane, and through forming their inner world, the actors begin to perfect themselves. If I needed to play a cop first, I discuss it with my teacher, my director, or even with a real policeman, and after that I'd play the role. My school of thought protests against this kind of approach. First I play the role and then a policeman comes and sees how a real cop looks. After all, it is art. It is so real that the policeman himself can take a lot from me playing a cop as much as I might have taken from him. This is much more interesting. I've watched American films and some famous American actors are developing based on this principle. For example, when De Niro plays a character, I totally see that he is not just copying his character directly from the real world, he is creating the character from within himself. Therefore, many who belong to certain professions can identify themselves with De Niro's characters and can take a lot from his performances. Is it possible to say that your method teaches actors to compose a role? Yes. My method is the method of the composer. If you are not a composer, if you are not creating, if you only perform, it doesn't work. If you don't compose, nothing exciting happens. First, you need to create the entire world in which your character lives, a world which is in conflict with the other worlds. This is when we have a world of theater.